on, can you just put your hands together like this? Come on.
Hallelujah. <laughs> we really did come to lift Jesus up. How many of you know he's still the light? He is still the light. Come on. He's still the light.
Feeling unworthy of your grace Feeling unworthy of the price you pay for me Even when I fall, your love paid it all I don't deserve it, I don't deserve it oh, I know preach this morning as I continue to the book of Psalms I'm not preaching every Psalm but just a few 
this psalm that we have before us this morning is we know just when David wrote this psalm the title tells us this is a psalm of David the servant of the Lord who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul it was the United Kingdom that crowned David at last and David's enemies on every hand those within the kingdom and those across the frontiers had all bowed before his footstool. This psalm is found twice in the Bible, amen. Twice because the Holy Spirit wants to emphasize it. It is found in the history book of Israel in 2 Samuel chapter 22. And it is, and it is here in the hymn book of Israel, amen, Psalms 18. There are a few minor changes from 2 Samuel 22, changes no doubt made by David's own hand with the spirits leading. He edited the former work and submitted this psalm to the chief musician as a piece for the temple choir to sing. Uh -huh. There is one other item, there's one other thing in this uh, that, that, that we ought to take note at, amen, in this uh, superscription to the psalm. I'm going to read it for you. It says, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, hallelujah. David now tells us, amen, that the song was written when he, amen, when it became obvious that never again would Saul shadow fall upon him. Uh-huh. In, in, in the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of Saul. The word he used for hand is, is, is very interesting, saints of God, because, amen, uh, this word that he used for hand is, is literally a paw. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we recall what David said when first he had stood before Saul, the day he went down into the valley to eliminate Goliath of Gath. Saul had looked David up and down, looked at him and says, you just a little boy. And he concluded, we have no need of you. Uh, but David had another story. David then recounted two secret victories he conducted, amen, by the hand of God. David said that the Lord had delivered me out of the paw of the lion. Yes. And, and not only that, but God delivered me out of the paw of the bear. Yeah. And he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Yeah. And, 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 and he used the same word, paw, here when he referred to Saul. Saul had become a wild animal in his persecution of David. And God had delivered David <coughs> out of... Saul's poor. So then we can look upon this um, psalm as a magnificent poem of David's triumph over his entire enemy. Right here in the text. And over his exaltation to the throne. This is David's love song uh, to God. But you and I have a love song of victory just like David had. We really, we really don't have time today um, to, to really preach this entire psalm. But, 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 but I just want to deal with the first three verses that I read in your hearing. And I think that's going to take up the rest of our time. But if, you, if those of you who are taking notes, I want to preach on the topic. I love you, Lord. I, I, I took it right from the, from the first verse. I love you, Lord, look at what David says. I will love thee, O Lord. Amen. My strength. 
Can you, can you declare that this morning? Can you say, I love you, Lord? Hmm? Amen. Don't, 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 don't play with him. Amen. Don't give him no, 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 no play love. Can you say, I love you, Lord? Amen. David, amen. I want, I want to point out some things David did in these first three verses of uh, Psalms 18. If y'all would just pray with me. Amen. I need y'all to pray with me because I'm really going to get through the sermon today. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. At the very beginning, the psalmist makes some profound declaration. First, he declares his love for the Lord. And, 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 and then in verse number two, he, he, he declares his dependence upon the Lord. And then finally in verse number three, he declares his devotion to the Lord. It's right there. That's all I'm going to preach on today. Yeah. Amen. His, 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 his three declarations. First, he, he declares his love for the Lord. Yeah. Second, he declares his dependence upon the Lord. And finally, he declares his devotion to the Lord. That's all I got today. Now this word love, amen, here is a word that means to love deeply. David didn't have no superficial love for God. No, David had a deep love of compassion for God. Do you feel the same way for the God, amen, that saved you? Do you feel the same way for the God that woke you up this morning? Do you love him? Hallelujah. I'm not trying to get you into some guilt trip, but I'm just talking about what David is talking about. David says, I love the Lord. David expressed his commitment to the Lord, amen, who is the source of his strength, comfort, and sustenance. Amen. David says, I love you, God. And the phrase I love you communicates an intimacy of his relationship based on experience. Yeah. Can I talk to you? Amen. Hallelujah. When, when, when you love somebody, it's because you have some experience with the person. Teach Pastor Fernand, I think I will. Hallelujah. When we look back, amen. Uh, I don't know about you, but, 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 but I can tell him I love him. Because when I look back over my life and see all that the Lord has done for me, and how, hallelujah, can I not say to God that I, I oh, glory to God, I love him, amen. Because when I look, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I look back and see just how God made a way out of no way. How can I not love him? How can I not, amen, adore him? How can I not show back him? How can I not worship him? How can I not love God when I look back over my life and see just how God made ways out of no way? How God opened doors for me? How can I not say I love him? First John chapter 4 verse 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. There was nothing in you and I that deserved the love of God, but God loved us anyhow in spite of our own self. Somebody ought to shout amen. I know that's right. The hymnologist said this way, Oh, how I love Jesus. Y'all know what that hymn? Oh, how I love Jesus. Why? Because he first Love me. Is there anybody in the sanctuary who's willing to declare I, I love him because he first loved me? Yeah. Glory to God. But this, but wait, wait, wait. There's one more thing in verse number one. Look at the B clause. He says, amen. Look with me at the B clause of this verse. David is expressing his personal experience with the Lord. He is expressing, amen, his personal faith in the Lord and his personal relationship with the Lord. He's telling us, amen, that he is totally dependent upon the Lord for his strength. It's right there in verse number one. He says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Look at what David said. Hallelujah. David says, God is my strength strength. Yeah. Woo. Preach Pastor Fernanda. I'm trying to stay calm. The Bible declares in Psalms 100 know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. David is saying all that I am. All that I will be I owe it to you Lord. David is saying here I am. Hallelujah God. Glory to God. David is saying that the joy of the Lord is my strength. David is saying all my help come from you God they would say God without you I can do nothing is there anybody who feel like David feel hallelujah glory to God 
Oh, I feel like preaching up in here today. Mm. John chapter 15 verse 5 says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. I said without God you can do nothing. David say hallelujah without God. He can do nothing. Hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But with God I can do all things. Without God I can do nothing. But with God. God, I can do all things. Is there anybody in the sanctuary who can testify with Paul in Philippians chapter 4? I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me. Is there anybody in the building this morning that can testify that my strength, glory to God, it comes from the Lord. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills for which cometh my help. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me hurry. Let me hurry lest I hold you too long. Let me hurry lest I hold you too long. Verse number one, we see David's declaration. But in verse number two, we look at David's dependence upon the Lord. It's right there in our text. I'm not going anywhere, but right here in the text. Look at verse number two. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler. Uh, and, and, and the horn of my salvation and my high tower I don't know if he was counting but I was counting as I was reading and David is making this personal he uses the phrase my eight times in this one verse saints of God you must have a personal relationship with God David is saying I know him for myself and that's the reason why I can say that the Lord is my rock can you say that today with David you got to know him for yourself I know mama and them know him I know papa and them know him but do you know him I ask you a question do you know him I ask you a question do you know him I'm gonna ask you one more time do you know him uh, have you tried him and if you know him and you tried him I'm here to testify that he's all yes he's all right he's all right I know he's all right mm -hmm. if you don't know him I said if you don't know him yeah. let me introduce you to him yeah. the Bible declares in Romans chapter 10 verse number 9 that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation verse 13 goes on to say for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved I'm going to ask you one more time I'm going to ask you one more time do you know him Help me preach for a little message this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you know him? Have you tried him? Can you tell somebody that he's all right? That he's all right? That he's all right? Oh, glory to God. I feel like preaching right here, right now. Y'all pushing me right now. Y'all pushing me. I say y'all is pushing me right now, y'all. <laughs> Calm down, y'all. Eight times he says my. But then in verse number two, he used eight metaphors. Yes, he did. He used some pictures 
to let us know why amen is personal with David can you and I walk along with David this morning in verse number two David described God as a rock huh? when everything else in the world is being tossed and twisted uh, God forever remain the same He's always stable. Ah, yeah. oh, when there's uncertainty all around you. Yeah. David is saying to you and I, the God that I serve, he is my rock. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody here in the sanctuary online right now? Hallelujah, your job may lay you off. You thought the job was your rock. Ah, oh, you had some friends in your life who walked away from you and you thought your friends were your rock. You got some family members who walked away from you and you thought they were your rock. But is there anybody who can testify that God is my rock? Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Is there anybody who can testify? Glory be to God. Come here, Malachi. Malachi chapters 3 and verse number 6. For I am the Lord. I I change not. Oh, come here, right off Hebrews. And chapter 13, verse number 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Is there anybody in the sanctuary? Is there anybody out there who know him to be your rock? Is there anybody who know him to be your rock? If he is your rock, go on and give him a praise. Go on and lay back and praise him for being your rock. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. I said Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel like preaching here. On Christ. I said on Christ. On Christ. The solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Whoa, I said Jesus. He's my rock. Yeah, he's my rock. I got seven more to go. I don't even know if I'm gonna make it through them all. But David said, not only is he your rock, but he's your fortress. It's right there in the text. Look at it. He says, for, for he's my rock and my fortress. David said that God is like a fortress. This 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 has a reference to a high cliff. Yeah, a place where you can run to. And David knows about running from the enemy because he had to run away from Saul. Anybody had to run away from some things in your life? Anybody had to run away from some stuff in your life? Is there anybody who had to run? You had to turn, you had to turn your back on some stuff? Glory be to God. David says, Glory, he says, I had to run and I ran to God. And sometimes we run in all the wrong places. Oh, glory to God. I said, sometimes. Sometimes we run in all of the wrong places, but we need to run to God. He be, why? Because He is our fortress. Psalmist, the Psalm says in Psalms 57 and verse number one, have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me, for in you my soul take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed listen leaning close you can have amen some problems on your job Go on, go there, Pastor. Go there. You can have problems even in your own home, but you can run to God in the midst of the disaster. You can run to God in the midst of the problem. You can run to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You God says you can run to Him. But 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 then but then he says David David says that God is a deliverer. It's right there in the text. My fortress and my deliverer. Has God ever had to deliver anybody? Y'all yeah. y'all, y'all don't act all cute on me now. I know y'all on camera this morning, but has God ever had to deliver you from some things that you got your own self into? 
I want to talk to some real people here this morning. Has God ever had to deliver you from some stuff, amen, that you got your own self into? And God showed up as your deliverer. Hallelujah. His mercies are new every morning. Ain't it, is, is there anybody who knows what I'm talking about? God had to show up. Glory be to God. God showed up right in the nick of time and delivered you, hallelujah, out of that thing that you got yourself into. And then some people dug some ditches for you and God delivered you anyhow. Am I talking to anybody here today? Joseph can testify when his brothers sold him into slavery. They thought that they meant it for evil, but God turned that thing all around for his good and God delivered him out of the hole. God delivered him out of the prison and God, hallelujah, put him right in the palace. That's what the God that I serve and do for you. Can somebody give him praise? If you know God has been your deliverer, has God, oh, hallelujah, I said he's your deliverer. He's our deliverer. Mm. I needed God. Anybody ever needed God to do some things in your life? You needed to be delivered from some stuff. Glory be to God. I know if the truth be told, you need to be delivered even right now. I'm a hurry. I'm a hurry. Now David said, David says, look, look at the text. I'm trying to, I, I can't finish this. Come on. I can't finish. Uh, Brother Bonnie, you're going to have to come back next week. But he said, he says, my God, my deliverer. And then he used the word again, my God. Uh-huh. Just right there. My God. My God. And, and, and this word, my God, is, is L. It refers to God as Almighty God. Huh? Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. I said, uh, have you ever had a time in your life where you couldn't say but two words? My God. Huh? I'm talking to some real people here now. Have you ever been in a situation where the only thing you could say was my God. Let me ask you one more time. Have you ever been in a situation where the only thing that can come out of your mouth? My God. Huh? Uh, let me encourage you. God is in control. Because whenever you and I get to the place where all we can say is my God, it means the situation is out of our control. Yeah. You can't even phantom, you can't even figure out, you, can't, you, you don't even know which way to turn, and all you can say is, my God. And that means God is almighty, he is in control. He has his hands on the thermostat of your life. He knows how to turn the heat down when it gets too hot. I said God is in control. He's in control of every step that you take. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, it's going to work out for your good. All you can say is, my God. But I've learned that I know that all things work together. Hallelujah. For good them that the love. God and who are called according to his purpose I know you can't figure it out I know you're trying to scratch your head trying to find out what's going on but God is in control and it is working out for for your good come on and give God a praise if you know it <laughs> but then David goes on to tell us I'm, I'm hurrying I'm hurrying he says, my strength in whom I will trust. Saints of God, um, sometimes we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Huh? I know it personal because over three weeks ago, I was in this pulpit preaching amen the gospel yeah. I was in the pulpit trying to encourage the people of God yeah. and uh, uh, looking forward to coming back the next Sunday yeah. but I didn't know I was going to be laid up in my house with COVID-19 yeah. uh, with a fever and headaches for days couldn't even make it to the church house yeah. but, 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 but I'm trying to tell you amen uh, that God is, is not only in control 
uh, uh, but, 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 but I need God and, and, and you need God because we don't know what's going to come our way hallelujah glory be to God but the one thing I do know whatever comes my way my God is going to be right there for me whatever comes your way God is going to be right there with you he'll walk through the fire with you I said he'll walk through the fire with you he'll walk through deep waters with you no matter what you're going through I said he'll be right I can preach this all day long because I know that my know that I know hallelujah that the God that I serve the Bible declare in Isaiah chapter 43 when thou pass through the waters I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shall not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon you is there anybody in the sanctuary who can give God praise for being right there God will never leave you nor forsake you he promised he'll be right there is there anybody can I get one person who can give God a praise hallelujah when you need him he's right there he'll never, he said, I, he'll never leave you he's right there Oh, hallelujah. Woo. But if I had time, I'd talk about the buckler. He says, God is my buckler. And, and what a buckler is, saints of God, is a shield. And, and, and what David is saying, sometimes God will allow the problems to come into your life and give you, <laughs> and give you grace to handle the problem. But then there are other times when God will be your buckler. That means he'll be your shield. There are some times when God will step in between you and the problem. That's a buckler. That's a shield. There's some times when problems are trying to come your way and God will step in. Glory to God. Is there anybody who can testify? That he's protected me from danger seen and unseen. God stepped in between you and trouble, between you and temptation, between you and heartaches, between you and heartbreaks. God stepped in. I got to go. Let me jump on down. I, I got to go to verse number three. I can't hold you no longer. I can't hold you. I got, I got, I got, I got to go. But listen, listen, saints of God. Listen. We're done. Everybody standing. I ain't going to preach no more. <laughs> David said in verse number three, he's worthy of the praise. And he says he's, the reason why he's worthy of the praise is because he's going to defeat all of my enemies yes. leaning close yes. don't miss this watch this now watch this David says I know what he did in the past and I love him for what he did in the past but I'm going to praise him right now for what he's yet to do in the future can somebody in the sanctuary give him a praise in advance for what he's going to do tomorrow. For what he's going to do next week. For what he's going to do next. Can somebody praise him? Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let have prayer. Praise the Lord. Doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Do you love him? Do you love him? The love of God never fails and the redemptive work of God continues. God loves you and his desire is to have a relationship with you. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that's Jesus Christ that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you desire a relationship with God through his son Jesus Christ, you can have it. If you're in the Oviedo area, if you're in the Orlando area, please
come and worship and praise God with us in the sanctuary. Uh, we would love to have you here worshiping God with us together. Our worship service starts at Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And I would also ask that you please help support this ministry. Help us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, by giving us your best generous offering. You can give online or you can mail your offering in. Please, we ask that you partner with us as we share the glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Amen.